As winter barrels through, the people who will be hit the hardest are those without a roof over their head. Tonight, over 500,000 people in America, many out in the freezing cold, won't have a place to sleep. The situation is getting so bad in some cities, officials are treating homelessness like a natural disaster. Maggie Ruley hit the streets to learn more. All right. Roaming the aisles of this dollar store, usually I get ravioli. Twenty-year-old Anthony and his friends start the day off with a little grocery shopping. Spaghetti and meatballs. We got orange soda. Next, it's a short walk down the road to their favorite coffee shop. This is where I hang out for the majority of the day. Sunset Boulevard, one of the coolest spots to be in Los Angeles, California. It's where you'll find the livest nightlife, coolest restaurants, and maybe even bump into a celebrity or two. The Hollywood Boulevard is just down that way, and there's so many tourists having fun and chilling. Just a few blocks away is where you'll find Anthony's home, but without the Hollywood glitz and glam. Anthony is homeless. For more than a year and a half, he's been living on the streets, trying to survive. What's hardest about being homeless for you? Probably, like, staying safe. Because there's, there's a lot of other homeless people out there that are very aggressive. An accidental fire left him and his mother with nowhere to live. When his mom was admitted to a mental hospital, Anthony was left to fend for himself. Being homeless is lonely, and it's sad. He found friendship among three other homeless guys that he met nearby. This is my family. They're closer to me than my real biological family. With some money from jobs and help from the government, the four of them can afford basic necessities along with some luxuries. Food, phones, even this storage space to store their items during the day. They receive clothes from donation bins and wash where they can. Anthony is one of more than 44,000 homeless people in Los Angeles County alone. Most of them centered in LA's downtown neighborhood, Skid Row. With more than 10,000 residents, Skid Row is known as the homeless capital of America, with the highest concentration of homeless people anywhere in the country. And it's been that way for decades. You got people living in tents. I mean, it's just everyday life on the streets. I would want to leave someday and have a, a home and a kid or wife and family or something like that. But while Skid Row is the iconic face of homelessness in Los Angeles, it's Hollywood that draws in young people from all over the country, hoping to make it big in the entertainment industry. A lot of the youth, if they always say if they're going to be homeless or they're going to be struggling, uh, they would rather do it um, in the area where they'd like to be, where the weather's better. In LA, where the average rent for a two-bedroom apartment is about $2,600 a month, being able to afford a place to live is getting harder and harder, especially for young people. Overall, the homeless population has grown 12% since 2013, forcing city leaders to take a bold step. We're going to begin the process where we declare the homeless crisis an emergency. A state of emergency, a term usually used during a natural disaster, allows officials to tap into emergency funds during a crisis. This time, the emergency was homelessness. And Los Angeles wanted help from the state and federal government. How does declaring a state of emergency over homelessness compare to a natural disaster? People definitely need uh, more food, more housing, more basic needs met. So yeah, of course, it would be another form of a state of emergency if it's affecting people. I got peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Nick Semensky works for Covenant House California, a shelter in Hollywood that serves young people. He says he needs more funding. So what would you do with extra money? Um, I would continue to expand as far as the amount of beds. Um, that would be great because there'd be less people on the wait list, more people could get in, and a little bit more advertisement. We could be out there just spreading the word a little bit more. Los Angeles did not get those emergency funds because it had never been done before. But the idea caught on. Four other similar declarations have been made in Portland, Oregon, Seattle and King County, Washington, and the state of Hawaii. So Anthony, this is where you sleep? Yes, this is, okay. this is, this is my tent, this is where I sleep. For now, Anthony prefers the streets to a homeless shelter. And he says the next time you see a homeless person on the street, don't be so quick to judge. If people think you're homeless, they're gonna assume that you're a bad person. 
And like, I don't want people to think I'm a bad person. He and his new family are working on a plan to save enough money for an apartment by the end of this year. I don't like my living situation, but I like life. I, I always thought life is a good thing that needs to be treasured. There's a lot of people when they get stuck on these streets. Some of us lose hope and never think we can get off. It was cold. I don't know where to go. Everyone that you see is a stranger. I mean, you never know if they're going to help you or not. I would define homelessness as a struggle. It's a huge struggle to get by and to not know where you'll be the next day or within the next month. And it really is something that is so hard to build off of. On a typical night in America, around half a million people are homeless. One third of them young people under the age of 24. They look like any other kid on the street. They just want to be kids. And they're stuck in a situation where it's harder and harder to be kids. Most of us probably don't even know what to do with our lives yet. Now we're just trying to figure out how we're going to eat. Poverty, a lack of affordable housing, and what many call a failing foster care system have created an epidemic. Don't ever assume that you can't be homeless. Hmm. I used to think I'd never be homeless, and it happened so fast. By the time you realize you're homeless, it's like, mm, it hurts. To escape the hurt, many turn to drugs and alcohol. Everyone at night is doing some kind of drug. Mm. And it's, it's real tempting and easy to just, you know, take one hit. More than a third of homeless people suffer from addiction. If you walk up down the shelter just one day, someone will ask you black, white, which is just heroin or crack. Outside this shelter in Utah, we meet Aaron Chandler, who's been on the streets dealing with his addiction for years. My mom's constantly calling the jails, coroner's office and stuff, and it's just, they, they're just, you know, they're scared and it, you know, it breaks my heart. I'm, you know, it sucks saying that because here I am, you know, yeah. down here, active in my addiction. The only times I've never been able to get clean is getting locked up or, you know, thrown in rehab. I've never been able to do it on my own. Homelessness is a problem across the U.S., and some cities are using extreme measures to address the issue, making it illegal to be homeless, illegal to beg, and illegal for people to give food to the homeless. Traditionally, a homeless person must prove that they're clean and off drugs before they get help with housing. But now other cities are doing something a little different. In a program called Housing First, they're giving homeless people homes and then addressing problems like addiction and employment later. Get somebody off the street and stable, and then I can start working. Because if I'm on the street, it's a traumatic, chaotic environment. I can't make therapeutic progress if I'm in that kind of environment. Rob Westman helps run this temporary home for homeless girls in Utah a state with one of the highest success rates using Housing First. We have to accept that whatever the folks have done, whatever our young people have done, they do it to survive. So here, though, if a young person shows up, they don't have to prove that they're clean or nope. in school or employed, nope. and they'll still potentially have a home here. Yep. <laughs> Giving a chance to girls like 20-year-old Jamie. When you first came here, were you still addicted to drugs? Yes, I was. Yeah. I was addicted to methamphetamine. Homeless since she was 13. Well, my mom was addicted to heroin, and so it just became really unstable. She moved out and couch surfed with friends. Would you have been able to come to a place like this if they had said, you have to get clean before you're allowed in? Oh, no. No? I probably would have just been stubborn and hmm. said, oh, I can't do it. This is a kitchen. We have chalkboard cover. Instead, Jamie was given a home, a sense of stability and family. And then she began working on her drug addiction and found a job. I wake up and I go to drug therapy four times a week. What do you do at night? Um, I come home from work and I do my chores. Utah's statewide Housing First program has stood out. What has the success been like for Housing First here in Utah? Chronic homelessness is down 90% since we started these interventions. 90%, which means Utah has almost wiped out the problem of chronic homelessness, those who have been living on the streets for more than a year. 
The chronically homeless only make up 10% of the homeless population, but they use around 90% of available resources. You know, that was one of the reasons for the focus on those individuals. They've been out on the streets the longest. They're using services all over the place. Ballpark, it used to cost about $20,000 for someone to be chronically homeless on the street. And if we get them in housing, it's closer to $12,000 a year. Good for the economy and the community. And here at Jamie's home, the results are similar. It's not, gee, we're gonna move from one assistance program to another. Folks want to do things on their own and be successful on their own. Last year, everybody that transitioned away from the house went on to their own situation where they were paying rent and doing their own thing. So what's the best part of your life now that you're here? Being able to support myself and being able to have goals again and being clean and sober. Maggie Rooley, Channel One News.